It stood towering over the harbour, one of the wonders of the ancient world, the great lighthouse of Alexandria, the beacon of salvation to merchants and adventurers alike as they sailed across the sea. Now at a 1 to 100 scale, it sits by my armchair and lights the way through my own stories. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start from the beginning, from when I first started this construction. Hello there ladies and gentlemen and all variations there upon. In the last video I said that I needed a new lamp so I'm going to do some electronics work. I'll do some electronics builds actually. I need a new lamp. See, I did say that. But as anyone who knows anything about me will know, I can't do anything just by halves. So today we're going to be doing a replica build of one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. That's right, I'm finally getting around to doing another one. And today it's the Great Lighthouse of Alexandria. So this is my design for the Great Lighthouse. Now, with the Great Lighthouse, there's a fair amount of documentary evidence which all tends to coalesce around about the same sort of heights. They tend to say it's between 110 and 130 meters tall, which is an incredible amount of accuracy when you consider they didn't have standardized measures as we do now. And that makes it perfect for what I wanna do because if I divide that by 100, so it would make it a one 100 scale, it comes out to 110 centimeters at least, which will make it just high enough to sit over my shoulder while I'm reading. So the lighthouse consists of five different sections. The first section, the base section, is the foundation of the whole thing. Basically what happened a lot in the ancient world is you would cordon off one area of a site to be sort of the sacred site, the place for the gods, the mark boundary of a city or something like that. And so this base foundation section sort of acts like that. It marks out the area of the lighthouse itself because this was something of a sacred building. It had a statue of a god on top. It provided a very important life-saving function. So it was considered something of a holy site. Not entirely a temple, it was something um, slightly sacred. So we have this enclosed area down the bottom, which is an Egyptian faction, something like a courtyard. And the walls were raised about five centimeters high because they do need to look like they're big, robust things. So relative to the whole scale of the building, they need to be something that's going to be large. So in real life terms, this would be about five meters high. So this is like a building in and of itself down here. But there's also a ramp that goes up. You can't see from here, but I do have it on a smaller design down here. A ramp that goes up from the outside of this to the main door. And this ramp is what I'm going to use to hide the cable. So the cable is going to run into the front and run underneath this ramp. Going up to the main doors, the doors will actually open so that we've uh, got access to the computer inside and that'll be the on off switch behind the doors in there. This then moves up to the main section. This is about half the height of the whole uh, tower itself. It's a rectangular section. Three of the sides are exactly the same. There's two large sections with the windows on because we've got to get a low light in. It's unlikely that these would have had glass in them because of just how expensive glass was at the time and for a large area to create a pane of glass that big it's really pushing the edge of the technology that they had available. So it's likely that they just had openings in the windows, which would also have reduced wind resistance, allowed the wind to blow directly through. And that would have just allowed light to come in so you can see where you're going when you're going up the stairs. Between each of the main sections I've put one of these big platforms. These platforms I don't think I have enough bronze to gild them myself. So uh, I'm going to be painting them bronze. I, I'm not sure that these did exist on the lighthouse, I'm just putting them in there to make them look more visually interesting. The edges and corners will have to be built out a little bit more because they're the uh, weight bearing section. So this is the main column that's going to support the weight. This section in the middle, which is uh, sort of set in a little bit is where the windows go. And that's thinner because it can creates less weight, which means less support needed further down. But the main structural weight comes down these thicker outer corners. So that's about half of the height of the actual lighthouse done. As you can see, it's already basically the same size as the chair by a little bit. So what I need to do now is decide which side is going to be the front. 
Now, the way I'm going to have this positioned is that the uh, front and right hand side, my right, its left, are going to be the most visible. So, I want the two sides that look the best. I mean, this one's a bit knackered at the top. So, I want this side and which other side there, so probably this one, this side and this side to be positioned facing forward to give the best face forward. And I think I'm all right with that way around, so let's uh, get the main entrance cut on this because this is going to be the one side that doesn't look like the others. So I'm pushing a bit of car that's about the same uh, size that I want the ramp to be and I've positioned this right in the centre of that square. It's not stuck down yet because I need to be able to get in to do the electronic later on. I'm just going to mark out the edges of the rampart and the sort of height it was at before it fell down. And I want the doors to be wide enough that I could get in and out to this Arduino. So I want positioning that so it's roughly in the centre. And then I'm going to put the doors. I want the bottom of the doors to reach to the top of this wall. So. So really that's the sort of area I want for the front. So let's get that cut in. Next section going up is a smaller octagonal section. And the reason that I think that they've made another section on top and made it smaller is because then you can create less weight going further up. If you continue this uh, big rectangular section all the way up, you're ending up supporting a lot of extra stonework that basically isn't doing anything. So you're just creating extra weight at the top for the bottom to support, and you can't get it as high. So once they've got sufficiently high, then they're going to they reduce the uh, amount of stone that they're using make it lighter. So as you can see this is very floppy and not really holding its shape. Now I could just reinforce this with loads of the tape and just try and get it to hold roughly the right shape. I'm not going to do that however, I'm going to take a different tack and to do that I've cut out a piece that would have been the roof, one of the uh, supports. I'm going to mark on a um, octagonal shape on here and then hot glue this directly to it so that it will hold its shape by sticking to this. So, let's try and get the uh, octagon down. just so happened that this candle was the right circumference so I'm wrapping cardboard around the outside in order to create the cylinder for the next section. Now I was originally going to make the columns that go around the outside of this out of cardboard but I thought that might be a bit too fiddly to make them thin enough so I'm going to be using my trusty dowel rods instead. Now the advantage of using the dowel rods is that they're all uniform so they're going to look much better on the finished project. The downside is I think the uh, circumference of these is going to be actually less than what would be required if I were to do this to scale. I think these might be a bit thin. Um, that being said, I don't know what the diameter was at the top. Ideally, they would want it as thin as possible, uh, but there's still a lot of weight above that to support. We don't have anywhere near as much evidence for how the top part looked as the rest of it, because this was the first part to be destroyed in earthquakes. It's the least stable, uh, which I suppose would lend weight to it being the thinner ones at the top anyway because they're more likely to break. What I'm going to do is cut these down to size, they need to be cut down to 10 centimeters each which means I'm going to mark on the 10 centimeter mark for all of these, stick them in the vise, saw them off and hot glue them into place.
Now I'm getting to the point where I'm going to have to start thinking about how the electronics are going to fit in. So I'm going to have to, at the very least, make a hole in the middle of the whole lighthouse going from top to bottom that's wide enough to fit these wires through. And I'm going to work on this being the widest point, this little uh, plastic connector that's going to catch the NeoPixel LEDs. Um, so this is roughly one centimetre, just over a centimetre at its widest point. So I'm going to have to make a one centimetre by one centimetre hole in the bottom of this and the bottom of each layer of the structure I've already built before I start putting tops on things and uh, folding things up. Now cutting these out, I didn't plan it or anything, but there was just enough cardboard on that little strip to get enough trapezoids to go all the way around the outside of this. So let's stick these in place with some duct tape and then attach it to the big cylinder and we'll have almost that section done. Silver the inside using tin foil. By using tin foil, then I can crumple it a bit and diffuse the light a little bit more, make it look a little bit more fire like. For the roof section, I didn't plan or measure or anything, I just tried to cut and see how it ended up. And it ended up a little bit lopsided to say the least. So, in a future build, I think I'm probably going to have to take the roof off and rebuild this section. But for now, it's good enough. So that's about all I'm going to do today. But I have just noticed I've done the order of operations wrong in that I've just glued that on and I haven't put the dispersion material on the inside. So I'm going to have to either take that off or figure a way of inserting the material around the back of it looking crap and getting all wrinkled. And it stands at a decent height coming up to the middle of my rib cage. Happy so far, but I've got work in the morning so I've got to go to bed. But uh, we'll see how far I can get over the next week. So it's actually been several days since I last filmed because because uh, my boiler went on the fritz so I've had to spend the day trying to fix that and then filing and then have to call an engineer out. But anyway back to this and the first thing got to do is correct the mistake that I made last time by removing the very top of this just carefully trying to cut out the glue. Now that I've fixed that little problem, now we've got to move on to the next bit. What you'll notice around the sides of all the cardboard is that there's very rough edges and there's a gap between the two facing layers of the cardboard and the corrugation in the middle. So on all of the edges where it's been a cut, so down the sides here, across the sides here, there's sort of an exposed gap so if I were to paint directly over that it's going to look bad, going to look naff. So I'm going to have to cover that up with something. Not only that, but if I wet the surface of this cardboard too much with paint, there's a danger you can see the corrugation on the inside. I don't think it's going to be too bad with this uh, cardboard up here and this one here because it's quite thick. It came, it's a box that a chair came in, so it's quite hardy. But uh, the thinner pieces that have been uh, taken from Amazon boxes the, they're probably going to show the corrugation through. So the way I'm going to get around that is to do as I've done before, is I'm going to coat this in a layer of newspaper along with PVA glue and water mix. Just create a layer that's going to create a more consistent surface that I can then paint on. At this point I realised that the second platform looked a bit out of place so I decided to cut it into an octagon shape. And 
the nanny that to dry overnight. Now I'm not going to go into great detail about how to program your Arduino because there's a great tutorial by Cameron Cosplay and I'm going to link that both at the top of the screen and down below but basically if you're new to programming you just go to the Adafruit website and do a search for the type of code that you want and there is a great library of code pre-written there that you can download for free. All that you need to do is find something that does sort of what you want. Here I've found a NeoPixel dust bag that gives the right sort of effect and it's created by John Park, just to give credit. And all you do is you copy down the code that's on that, paste it into the appropriate program and then do some editing to get it to work the way you want. All I did to the code is I deleted all but one of the if functions and then adjusted the colours so that it became more like a fire colour than a pink pixie colour. And then I just upload that into the Arduino and install it. Now obviously the wires that came with the LEDs aren't long enough to go down the entire lighthouse. So I'm going to have to extend them, soldering things up and being sure to cover up the exposed wires with some electrical tape. Then after placing the LEDs in the beacon section, you just got to run the wires through. Test everything's working. Hot glue everything into place. And then we can move on to the details. In order to create the windows, I used masking tape in order to mask off the areas I wanted to remain white. So I've got one centimeter windows on the lower section and one centimeter by two centimeter windows on the higher section. Then just paint over the exposed areas in order to get black windows where I want the details to be. The final section on top, the fifth layer, contains two parts. There's the uh, conical shaped roof that le leads to a single point, and on top of it, there was a statue of a god. What god this is, we don't actually know. There are two conflicting accounts. Some say it was Poseidon, which would make sense as being the god of the sea, but there's also accounts of it being Zeus the savior. Zeus saying his role as savior actually, to me, makes more sense because it's something high up in the sky that's um, delivering people from the sea rather than it being Poseidons, which being of the sea, it's delivering people from the sea, and the ancients, lightning, which was Zeus's domain, and fire were interchangeable. They were essentially the same thing. So it makes more sense for me to, for Zeus to be sitting on top. Like, this is going to be gilded in gold, I think. Now, when I built the last wonder, the Pyramid of Khufu, what I did was show a scale model of me compared to the wonder. So, here I am again, and here is a scale for comparison. 